we have two options the first option that we can only write about first three terms like this and the downside of this hierarchical structure would be the very specific uh, biological processes Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, I will tell you how we can interpret results of gene ontology term analysis, especially for writing your results for research article. So before we go into the further detail of gene ontology, let's try to understand what is ontology. So ontology is actually the set of terms with defined relationships. So then what would be the gene ontology? So the association between gene products and go term would be called as gene ontology. The gene ontology knowledge base is the world largest source of information on the function of genes. So actually uh, this gene ontology is a database. Let me show you that website. Here is that website. Uh, that is actually the gene ontology resource database. Here you can see we can enter any specific go term id and get its ontology or gene product and we can also uh, upload the list of all the genes and can get uh, biological processes molecular functions or cellular components uh, we can also choose our desired species or animal or organism and we can launch and get to know that what would be the those processes using this database so let me take you back to that uh, go term analysis interpretation. The gene ontology analysis is meant to answer very simple question. And to understand more, let's take uh, this example. In this example, you can see there are two panicles. One panicle is normal and one panicle, the apical tip is degenerated. So the gene ontology analysis will help us to know that which genes are being upregulated and downregulated in this and they are coding for what so you can see given a list of genes found to be differentially expressed in my phenotype because my phenotype under study is that degenerated phenotype versus that control there should be one treatment it should always be compared with its control and what are the biological processes cellular components and molecular function that are implicated to that uh, phenotype uh, would be known through gene ontology analysis the simplest gene ontology analysis is over representation analysis which is also known as enrichment analysis the gene ontology is a controlled vocabulary composed of more than 38000 precise defined phrases which are called as go terms you have often seen uh, many types uh, of gene ontology terms here i have quoted one example that each go term has a unique id that can be searched in that database and that database actually annotates that go terms into a specific gene function according to that uh, evidences of experiments so there are actually the three types of uh, terms uh, one is biological processes second is cellular components and third is molecular functions now let's try to understand that how we can interpret the results of these gene ontology analysis you have often seen these type of figures in many research articles, but uh, students are confused that how we can write the results of these go term analysis these are actually the you can see here this this is showing apa1331 versus wild type so actually now wild type is we know this is actually the control so now we can understand this is actually the comparison of two treatments and showing only top 10 gene ontology terms so it is impossible to write all the you know, biological processes cellular components and molecular functions so what we can do we have two options the first option that we can only write about first three terms like this that the highest are the significant gene ontology terms related to biological processes where pollen exine functions sporoid pollinine biosynthetic processes and plants can resolve all biogenesis 
Similarly, we can move to uh, cellular components and similarly we can move to uh, molecular function and we can only talk about top three with highest p value. So it is important to note that here a word is very important that is called enriched. So uh, let me uh, show you that screenshot uh, which explain the results and inter interpretation of this figure. So you can see the go enrichment analysis of significantly enriched DGs between mutant type uh, and wild type was categorized into biological processes, cellular components and molecular functions. Among the top 30, uh, but here are only mentioned 10, uh, 10 down-regulated DGs, pollen exine function and uh, saporopollenin biosynthetic process, plant types, can cell wall biogenesis and similarly we can also write about while other important biological processes you can it is not only important to mention top three you can also mention some other relevant if you think that your phenotype is more mm, being covered by any other phenotype you can also discuss about them but it is better that if you only explain about top three uh, biological processes you can further uh, read this uh, note to get an exact idea that how to write the results of gene ontology. Here I have also mentioned that clues that you can talk about first uh, top down regulated uh, from each uh, category then you can talk about which biological processes then you can talk about that uh, go classification indicates that down regulation of pollenexine function saporopollenin fatty acids uh, omega oxidation related biological processes were enriched in APA1331 panicle. So it is important to use that word enriched because uh, enriched is mostly used for this go term analysis. Now I will try to answer uh, some frequently asked questions by the students. Many students ask me that uh, I have many graphs I don't know which should I select for including in the final results because probably they receive their results from the analyst and they don't know that which graph they should select. So answer of this question is actually uh, your final phenotype and its control because the go term analysis is only applied between the two treatments like in this example we have applied that one was the wild type and other was the mutant type. So because if you have only two treatments then it is fine. But if you have many treatments like in this example you can see T1, T2, T3 and T4. In this you can see the T, T1 is actually the CK and, and other treatments are you are probably applying the PEG with 30%, 50% and 70%. So let's suppose among all of these three your phenotype is giving best results at T3. So uh, you want to uh, defend or you want to interpret the phenotype of this treatment and want to compare with control. So uh, what we can first we can try to select among that which of this phenotype is our final. So let's suppose in this example the T3 is giving the best or the significant results then you can compare T3 with the control. So at a time you can only compare two because more than two comparison in go term analysis is not possible. So you then you would give a comparison of your final phenotype with always your control. So the second question I have 10 terms of biological processes, cellular components and molecular function. Do I should write the results for all? Uh, so the my answer would be no. Only top three with the highest uh, p values would be uh, okay to write. Others if you think the, there are some important categories which are giving the exact explanation of your uh, phenotype then you can include otherwise only top three and are okay to give as explanation. So the next question Kyan I include more than one figure of co-term analysis in the results of my uh, article. So the my answer yes you can if you think that there are more than two phenotypes let's suppose if you are having uh, one experiment in which T3 and T4 both are giving significant phenotypes then you can compare both uh, like uh, T3 with CK and similarly like 
T4 with CK, but at a time you would give only comparison of only two. So in this way, you can also uh, give more than two phenotype if needed. So the next representation of goat arm analysis is in the form of a hierarchical structure interpretation. To understand this, uh, we have to understand that what is actually the tree. In this tree, you can see the this this round structure is called the nodes, and uh, their connection of this arrow is called the edges. There is a structure which is a mixture of nodes and edges. It will make a tree, and. Uh, here I will show you another that is called directed acyclic graph. Here you can see this, this is actually the node. This is also node and this is also node. This arrow and this arrow would be called as edges. So here you can see now uh, this, this we call it as the parent node. This we call it as the child node. This will, would be called as grandchild node. So you can see here uh, number three is attached with two that is more than one and they are flowing in the same direction. You can see uh, one is linked with two and two is linked with uh, three and this. So that is they are also flowing in the same direction. Then they, they, this is called as directed acyclic graph which is also known as DAG. Here, let me show you a graph, general graph. What happens in general graph and how it is different? If you will see that one, two, three, they are actually uh, here. You can see uh, there is one parent node, there are two child node, and there are three grandchild node. But you can see here the direction of this arrow is different, and they are my, making a general graph. So the graph formed with these nodes and edges is not just any kind of graph it is also called as directed acyclic graph so don't confuse this directed acyclic graph with deg because deg is actually differentially expressed gene and deg is actually the directed acyclic graph the source uh, is referred to as the parent terms actually this is called as the parent term or the root and the destination is called the child term or the branch which i have already explained so here is a representation of hierarchical structure so here you can see one biological processes uh, with specific go term id is giving to a special explanation of negative regulation of program cell death so uh, so here you will notice that um, on the upper side there will, would be the journal explanation I mean the all the processes which are giving the example would be actually uh, the journal to all and the downside of this hierarchical structure would be the very specific uh, biological processes. Here you can see uh, the arrow showing with the black, uh, black color so actually you can see biological processes A is linked with B so if we say that biological regulation is actually a biological processes is a and if it is mentioned with this orange color uh, you can see this is actually regulation of biological processes through biological processes and if there is a red color it is showing the negative sign and if there is a green color it is showing the positive regulation so uh, you will also see the go term analysis explanation in the form of this hierarchical structure so a step further in the gene ontology analysis you will see uh, these days that an important category of methods uh, including the functional class scoring method and one of the best method in this category is actually the gene set enrichment analysis which i will not cover in this uh, video i will make a separate video to cover this and there are also more sophisticated gene ontology method so one of them is ELIM and the second is weight. Uh, here I have shown the few different ways to represent the go-term analysis. Here you can see the most common way is through this bar graph. And this, there is also a representation through with the combined number of genes with p-values. Here you can see it is being mentioned with uh, negative log 10 p-values and here it is shown with number of genes 
and you will also in see in few papers that uh, go term analysis can be can be represented with the help of these pie charts hope so you like the video if you are also facing an, any difficulty in the interpretation of the go term analysis please let me know in the comment section